Thanks very much for coming in. Yes. Yeah, so we, yeah, so we thought we'd um, well maybe if you just come and have a chat with us and tell us a bit quickly just want to say your names and which part of Scotland you're from because we've got you all travelled from all ears and pears haven't we so I'm left handed so I'm going to go this way so. I'm Kayla and I'm from Trinet I'm Sarah and I'm from Trinet I'm Kayla and I'm from Trinet so this is the Trinet thing massive <laughs> 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 uh, I'm Ben I'm from East Bermfordshire right. I'm Emma I'm from Paisley I'm Rudin I'm from a different bit of East Lothian <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sarah and I'm from West Lothian <laughs> I'm Zilda I'm from Edinburgh I'm Erin, I'm from Orphan. I'm Erin, I'm from North Lanarkshire. I'm Amy, I'm from North Ayrshire. I'm Ross from North Lanarkshire. I'm Zoe from North Ayrshire. I'm Andrea from Perth. And I'm John Swinney from Perthshire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and sometimes of Edinburgh as well. <laughs> so we thought we'd give you maybe just a few minutes and just kind of say why sure. you were keen to meet some young people and mm -hmm. stuff, particularly this morning. Um, but then I think we've got just some questions and some bit of a kind of a chat or anything that you want to ask any young people, really. Well, th thanks, Louise, and thanks everyone for coming. I appreciate just from listening to where you come from. So you've travelled quite a bit of distance, so it was really good of you to come in uh, this morning. And. What I was keen to do was to just have a chat this morning because this is a, a very significant day in Parliament today because we have the, the first stage of the bill to enable young people, 16, 17 year olds, to vote in the Scottish Parliament elections and in the local authority elections. So, a lot of, um, in the run up to the referendum last year, we successfully argued that 16 and 17 year olds should be able to vote in the, in the referendum. And there was, you know, overwhelming support for that within Parliament, um, but it wasn't universal. But after the referendum, uh, there was universal support in Parliament because people thought that the way in which young people had participated in the referendum was just, well, just a tremendous asset for the country and, and how the, the country felt about it, frankly. And you know, one, of the, um, you know, one of the big events in the referendum was the debate in the Hydro, where well, I think almost, well, I think all 16, 17 year olds in school setting were able to get there if they, if they were able to do so. And there was about 8,000 in the Hydro, and Nicola Sturgeon was on the, the panel from, from our point of view, and she said to me it was the most demanding and exciting debate of the entire referendum process because just the sheer volume of folks that were there and there was such a, a, a just an, an energy and an appetite and an honesty about the conversation that was going on, the questions that young people were asking. So we all came out of the referendum thinking well this has actually been um, an illustration of a, a good reform where young people are able to voting elections and on, on major issues and we wanted to carry it on. We were unsuccessful in persuading the UK government to change the law to enable young people to vote in the general election just a few weeks ago. Which I think for, for 16, 17 olds who voted in September last year must have really felt pretty weird that they were able to vote on this big question in September but they're not allowed to vote in May. So we were anxious to sort that out and we're, we're doing that process today. Um, the stage one debate will be this afternoon. We've got a committee report. The committees look at the bills that the government publishes, they take evidence and we've got a very supportive committee report this afternoon which basically goes through the positive experience of the referendum. And, um, and we'll start that process today. It'll, the bill will pass Parliament today because it's got comprehensive support and it'll go into committee. It'll be amended and then it'll come back for final approval in Parliament and that means that next May um, 16, 17 year olds will be able to vote um, in the Scottish Parliament elections which I think is a really important reform and um, so that's what we'll do today so that's why I was keen to come and see you this morning so thank you very much for that opportunity. Yeah brilliant and would any of you at the high school? Right, yeah. so there's a few of you there yeah. What did you think of it? Um, I, I I thought that, 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 that it, was, it was really good to, to see such such a vast amount of young people who were so interested in politics and so interested in in their future of of Scotland um, and, and the questions that were asked by young people were, were, were things that could have been asked by adults as well. Yeah, really, really good. Yeah. And did any of you, were any, did any of you vote in the general election? 
Yeah, yeah. So how did it then? Well, and, and, but for some, sorry, for it voted in the independence referendum, but it couldn't vote in the general election. How did that feel? What did you think? I was really disappointed. Like everyone was saying, all the old waiting girls, all going down to the ballot station. I was like, oh, I really wish I was doing that because it was such a great feeling to go down and put your mark on that paper, and you knew your vote was counted and you were going towards what you wanted as your family. And just not to have that again, it was, it was really disappointing to see all the hype about it. And I thought that it would, I thought it might pass through because of the referendum and how mm -hmm. everyone felt about it. And it and it was quite disappointing. Mm -hmm. it's, quite, it's quite interesting just the point there about seeing all the, you know, saying they were going to vote. Of course, social media, I was just looking at social media on polling day and you had loads of folk just putting in there, oh, I've been mm -hmm. to vote, you know. So, mm -hmm. so you would, amongst your peers, mm -hmm. you would see them all saying, oh, going off to vote, done my vote, did, you know, all that yeah. sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I suppose that would kind of rather reinforce the disappointment yes. you know, <laughs> about that. But it's, yeah, yeah. It, so you know, like social media opens up all of that, the, these, these things into the bargain. Yeah, we had to put out advice on the Young Scot in Twitter and Instagram about not doing the selfie inside the polling <laughs> station, <laughs> to be outside, you know, don't mess with So any questions, comments, anything that we want to ask? What about the tonight so far? Anything from here? Anything you guys want to ask or think about? Go for it. Go on. Do you think this could be the start of young people getting an overall voice, in, especially in local communities? Well, I think we've got to. Good question. I think we've got to. One of the things I'm anxious to do is to make sure that we have an approach to participation in our democracy that is more than just voting every five years. Because if you. you know, it's, it's really. You know, one form of democratic participation is, of course, to vote in elections. And I would, I, you know, I spend large amounts of my time encouraging people to vote, and it's really important that people do that. But as a as a politician, I also feel it's important for me to encourage people to participate in society in a whole variety of different ways. So, you know, we're looking. The referendum was a a, a great experience in that democratic conversation because wherever you went, you know. Cafes, I don't go to pubs, you know, but uh, so I would say pubs, but I would, yeah, what would I know about it? But, you know, cafes, buses, trains, your work, school, everywhere, the house, you know, people were talking about the issues in the referendum and what people's hopes were and what their views were. And it's really important as a government that we capture what people are saying and thinking within their communities. And we're looking at different ways in which Instead of just believing that people should um, uh, you know, vote in elections, we've got to find other ways of making sure we hear people's voices. And that's particularly important for young people because some of the things, the techniques that we would perhaps use as, uh, as a government, um, <clears throat> you're having a consultation exercise where you, you put out a consultation paper and you wait for people to come back to you. Well, are you going to respond to a government consultation paper? You know, uh, I don't think I would respond to a government consultation paper. Uh, so we've got to find ways of reaching young people. A lot of it might be done through social media, and social media to me is a great uh, way of reaching out to a broad cross-section of the population. But you've got to interact with them. You know, if you look at the First Minister, you know, she, she said that she would be the most accessible First Minister. So she's sitting there responding to messages she gets on, on Twitter from individuals directly so they can send a message to her and she's right back to respond to That's about engaging and listening to and following up on uh, uh, what people are thinking. But I think it's particularly important that young people become involved. And that's also, it's also I think in terms of shaping um, what goes on in communities as well. Because it's not just all about the kind of great issues of the nation. You know, there'll be issues about services in your locality where you could have a real influence about what actually happens and how it's taken from mm. These guys were part of recharge and training. They were finalists yeah. at the Young Scotland Awards oh, yes, for the work that, that they were doing as well. Yeah. So they're kind of part of all that. You know, I've got a question here. I know you were kind of key yeah. idea of one of them. Uh, at the last Scottish Youth Parliament sitting, uh, we were discussing the votes of 16, <coughs> and we were discussing whether you would also reduce the standing age to 16. What are your views on that? Hmm, that's interesting. I, I suppose the logic of it 
is that that should be the case. Because if you're old enough to, to vote, you should be old enough to participate in the institution. So I think the logic of it would be that it's not a position that we've adopted, um, but it's certainly one that there's a logic to it, given the fact that we're reducing the voting age. So I suspect I'll have to take that one away to think about it, to see what, uh, what it all... Because quite interestingly, it's amazing how events kind of take their course and you don't quite catch up with them. One of our successfully elected uh, MPs at the Westminster election is a young woman called Mary Black, who's 20, and she's been elected in um, Paisley South. But if you stopped me in the street and said to me, how old do you have to be to become a Member of Parliament? I would have said 21, because that's what it was when it must have changed at some stage. I didn't quite follow. But so, so the, 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 there must be a, there's a logic to that. Mm -hmm. Worth getting involved in a conversation and stuff as well. Do you have one over? Um, yeah. so far. Oh. Will there be any opportunities to teach, like um, make young people more aware and teach about like kind of political parties in the school if young people are going to vote? I think it's a, I think it's one of the issues that we're that we're wrestling with with this bill as to what um, it was one of the questions I got asked at the committee when I went to give evidence is the extent to which the schools are um, encouraged to give objective information that helps young people to be equipped. Because actually, some you know, when you go out in the, obviously during election time, you know, I, I'll go out on the doors and uh, talk to voters. And I've had conversations with people who've said to me, well, I don't vote because I don't know how to. And you know, and that's, a, that's something that I found very surprising. But then when you think about it, you know, I was, I suppose I, learn how to vote because you know, my parents went with me to vote the first time and encouraged me to do it, told me what you had to do when you got to the polling station. So I think there's, um, it's important that there's no barriers that are in the way for people to be able to participate in the democratic process. So I think that's, um, so, so we're making sure that schools are actively involved in conveying objective information so that young people can be fully armed with the knowledge and information to enable them to participate. What's the thought on schools? What's the experience around the room about I think schools? Like it's very difficult schools because obviously if you, you're, that teacher can't be biased, um, although they've got their own views, it's very difficult for a teacher to teach you about politics without them leaning. Um, and I think as well, if you don't pick modern studies or history, then... Well, I think... I think that's actually a very fair it's very, point. Yeah. I mean, if I didn't pick modern studies, I wouldn't have been so much involved in politics. Yeah. I would have known about it. Um, so I think that's very... Like, to show if some people are discouraged to that opportunity because they don't take modern studies or they don't take history. Um, so I think that's quite... Um, it's quite essential as well. So. I think that's a really good point that you, yeah. you actually... That, your, your point's perhaps a, a little bit about um, almost the, the question of civic education, mm -hmm. that every young person should have the opportunity to find out well, what does it mean to actually to yeah. vote, to participate, and, and particularly because it's now going to become, um, you know, for all elections other than the Westminster election, mm -hmm. you're going to have 16, 17 year olds. I think as well we find that like that's what I was going to say uh, for my question. Like the argument is like a lot of people say, well, six and seven year olds aren't knowledgeable enough in politics. I think one of the things is like the language of politics. Some of the politicians, when they speak, we're just so some in some cases are just so out engaged. Like some things we don't have a clue what they're talking about. But in voices, it's just the way that they the way that they speak, the language that they use. So I think. Like, I just want to know your view if this, obviously it's going through, like, how would you just approach your language to young people? Because some of the bills that come out and some of the things that they approach, like, when you read it, you just get, like, some people just get so out-engaged. Yeah. So you, you were saying, saying in your exam yesterday, you were just like, what's community yeah. planning? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yesterday, uh, I was like, <laughs> so... Right. What exam was that? Uh, Modern Studies Modern yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, so... And it was community planning. <laughs> no, could, no, 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 no. I could have written your exam for you. It was about the living wage yesterday. Living wage, right. Yeah, so, but, um, yeah, so I think that is a, quite a thing that puts maybe 
young people out of politics because... So I get the argument, you know, back to where you started, you know, that point that you know, young people are not knowledgeable enough yeah. to participate. You've got that mindset. Like you, you're you citizens of this country, uh -huh. so you're, you're entitled to have your say, because things happen around about you. Decisions get taken about services, about approaches, about law, all sorts of things. You're the title of your seat. I'm 51. <laughs> you know, I know about it. It's a long time since I was 16. So it's important that politics is, you've got a cross-section of people. So there's more, you know, there's more people of my age involved in parliamentary politics than there are people of your age. So you've got to have a broader cross-section to make sure that Parliament actually understands and appreciates the issues that are on the minds of a whole range of, uh, of people within the population. And it's one of those kind of things that I often can say is that one of my most hated phrases is when people are, are citizens of the yeah. future, because actually you're not, you're citizens right yeah, now, course. and there's that, exactly. that kind of bit about using those, those kind of services. Any other thoughts about school? Yeah. I was just going to ask something to say that if you think mm -hmm. getting young people involved are going to help to get older people involved, because we heard a lot on the referendum folks said, oh, I've not voted in 50 years, I don't see any points in it. Do you think getting their grandkids, their sons and daughters to get involved will energise them? See, what, what, what I think that... The referendum, you know, you, well, two statistics about the referendum, 97% of the eligible population registered to vote and 85% of those eligible to vote voted. Now, I've, I've been contesting elections for 23 years and at no stage have I taken part in a, in a, a parliamentary election other than the referendum, and which turned out was 85%. Now, what the referendum did, um, after years and years of drifting along with turnout declining, was that the referendum essentially rebooted people's relationship with the democratic process. So to a lot of people who had, who you're absolutely right, hadn't voted for years, thought no point in this, all the rest of it, they, it rebooted their connection with politics, and as a consequence, it, they were then more likely to vote. And then you saw in the UK election just a few weeks ago, the turnout in Scotland was um, about 72%, which was about 7 or 8% higher than it had been five years ago. So there's obviously a lot of folk have gotten, become re-engaged with the democratic process. So I think whatever else the referendum did, it really re it reactivated people's connection with politics, which is a good thing. And I think what we've got to now do, I'll leave it a bit as my answer to the question here about um, how we encourage participation, because we've got to encourage people to be actively involved as citizens in their community and involved in taking decisions about their community in a way that we've never previously done before. And that, of course, was driven by the, the, you know, the referendum. And actually, that, that ties to a question we've had on Twitter. Um, so we had a young person, Fraser, who said, um, how long do you think it will take the rest of the UK to be inspired and see how engaged young people can be with politics, given the opportunity? That's, that's his question, I'm um, Yeah, I think it's... I don't see that... I, I see absolutely no reason why the UK shouldn't follow our example. But it just is, you know, because if, if you look at it, we... I don't... What I'm saying just now is not in, in any way designed to be partisan, but uh, when we looked at the 16, 17-year-old issue, the Conservative Party were against it in Scotland. And then after the referendum, um, the Conservative Party said, well, look, we said before the referendum we were against this. You will want to make it clear we feel we were wrong on that now, having seen how it, it can... They're good on them. It's, 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 you know, all, 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 fair comment to them. And they were saying that we now realise that our position was wrong and that this has been a really good exercise and we should and they support it now for Scotland. Well, if the Conservative Party in Scotland has come to that view, I don't know why there isn't a view. And of course, this is now a very live issue about the EU referendum, because the EU referendum, whenever it takes place either during this year or... Uh, so, sorry, during 2016 or 2017, um, it's not proposed that 16, 17-year-olds get the vote. Although in the House of Commons, certainly my colleagues, the SNP folks will argue for that. I'm pretty sure the Labour Party have argue, are arguing for 16, 17 year olds to be able to vote in the referendum. So 
Uh, there may, and, and I think it's important because you know, the EU issues are very, very important to all of us. Um, we might make a bit of progress on that. But um, so that that actually might be part of the answer to Fraser's question that there is actually an issue, a very live, important issue, which is coming up, where we may well see a different. Um, there's an opportunity to push for a different outcome. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Any other questions? We've maybe not had a chance yet. Then I've got one that's slightly different. It's about obviously. We're all talking about empowering young people and votes at 16 <coughs> is absolutely brilliant and it's something we should be encouraging. But how do you think that like it'll affect society in different ways? Like obviously people can now get married, they'll be able to vote. Do you think that people will then start asking for things like whether people at 16 should be able to sit on juries or should be able to because all that's part of our community and people want to be involved in different ways now? I'm sure it opens up uh, other questions like that about what are the the appropriate areas of participation for young people. So uh, I suppose it's a wee bit like the question that your colleague raised there about what should be the age um, level at which you can stand. So you know, when you take a stance like this, there's always implications and consequences of what you come up with. So it's perhaps one that we should um, that we'll have to explore as to what are the other things that should be triggered as a consequence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that principle being established then allows you to have those other kind of conversations. It is quite like controversial though that by law you're at 16 you're treated as an adult but then you're treated as a child again in terms of your democratic voice. Um, so it's just, it's it's very frustrating that at 16 you can stay a cell, die for your country, yet you can't have your democratic right to a voice at 16. So it's just so controversial. I think also, and also the fact that I think one day you can have your democratic yeah. voice and the next day you can't. I know, yeah, because like, that's, that, that's put on the one, race and vote. The, the example that <laughs> you've been able to vote in the referendum and not in the election, that must be a really yeah. odd, odd feeling that you We're still registered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it was obviously you talk about manifestos and um, policies, and Erin was saying about how you can uh, the language used. I know a lot of adults that still find policies and manifestos really difficult to understand yeah. because of all the clip terms. So, would you then try and encourage um, the politicians to look at ways of expressing it in a youth friendly way so that it is easy to understand? And I think we've got to. Um, you know, I, I, I now, uh, as a government minister, I, I now work you know, a lot in professional um, meetings and internal civil service discussions, and we talk in a language. You know, I went home one night and uh, was explaining something to my wife, and I said, you know, our narrative on all of this is, and she said, stop. <laughs> Listen to what you've just said. It's absolute... You know, you're, you're talking in a kind of different language. A different, yeah. just a different language yeah. entirely. And just absolutely right. Like, and you've got to really watch how you express and communicate your uh, your points. And you know, a manifesto is nothing other than the proposals mm -hmm. a political party wants to implement. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. But you know, I accept that some of these terms can be a barrier to people properly participating mm -hmm. because of these factors. Mm -hmm. I think one of the kind of things is maybe about how you can involve more young people in writing these sorts of things and you know and, and those kind of things about that kind of cooperation. I think we've got about two more minutes, so we've maybe got time for one more question. You, oh, there you go, before it's yet. Yeah, I just asked about kind of representation. Like I think just now there's only one MSP that's under thirty. I'm not sure if that's correct, but I just think, do you think that allowing people to vote at sixteen would try and encourage people to maybe stand, maybe when they're younger, and encourage that? the Parliament's more um, representative of the actual demographic of yeah, the country. Yeah. I, I, I mentioned Mary Black, who's my no, colleague who's been elected MP. in the uh, <laughs> yeah. well, well, I, I, I saw her being interviewed during the election, and somebody was making the point to her, really making the point, you know, how, how are you at 20 able to be a member of parliament? And I thought her response was fantastic. She just said, look, there's no 20-year-olds in the parliament, but there's plenty of 20-year-olds in the country. And it's important Parliament hears from the 20-year-olds. And I just thought, you know, it's just, that is it. 
So, you know, there's plenty of 50 year olds, plenty of 40 year olds, plenty of 60 year olds, but are there any 20 year olds? Well, so I, I, I think, so, so I think there is, I think it's an important signal has to be given out that you, um, Parliament needs to be representative of the country. That's of course a whole range of different things. You know, Parliament's um, gender balance between men and women is not great. Um, you know, the, 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 the number of members of Parliament who have some experience of disability is limited. Members of Parliament with experience of um, coming from um, a broader range of different eth uh, ethnic backgrounds very limited. So, you know, it really is important. You know, Parliament's legislating for everyone in our country, so it's important that Parliament is representative of, of, of the public. And yesterday, you know, we had a, a classic example of that yesterday. You know, we were discussing the, the, the bill on assisted suicide for people with long term medical conditions. And it's like it's a really difficult issue, you know. It's a, and it's and we we weren't none of us were directed by our parties how to vote. We all voted as we felt about it. And that's important that Parliament is representative of the country to enable the different strands of opinion to be heard. Now we had <coughs> we had a very diverse debate yesterday of different perspectives from different people. But you know, so it's important on questions like that we have that breadth of experience that enables us to do that properly. I think we've kind of just about run out of time, so I don't think the last comments you want to make. No, I'm fine. But I would, I would to say thank you very much for, for being here and uh, for, for taking part in the conversation. It's been great to hear your perspective and to hear you so kind of buoyant about uh, your involvement, which is great. Fantastic. Well, thanks to all of you. I should also say thanks to those that were watching on Periscope. I've now lost my Periscope feed, but thank you very much. Yes, we were live streaming on Periscope as well. Someone's going to have to explain Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> I keep on seeing Periscope appearing. And yes. Well, you've just had your debut. So, so I've had my debut on Periscope. <laughs> so Someone really will have to explain Periscope <laughs> before I leave. So that I find out what I've had my debut on. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, today went really well. We got quite a lot of views from everyone, and we got. I feel like I got a better understanding of what other people's views were and what other problems we need to tackle. I think it went great. I think it was interesting to talk to the Deputy First Minister and, and find all the questions, especially the ones that came in from Twitter from other young people about Scotland. It went really good at meeting Don Chuan, like he, his views on what the government will do. Yeah, to make like 16, 17 year olds able to vote. Yeah. Uh, I think it was really interesting. Um, there was like a wide range of questions that came up that I had never ever thought of before. So it was really good to like learn from not just John, but from the other young people that came here today. So it was really, really interesting. <laughs>